time, it's time, it's time. We're going to go live. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do this. We're going to talk. My name is Mark Banfield. This is Listen Up, and we are here every Thursday, and we talk about all kinds of things relating to the automobile industry, selling, and uh, getting customers. So let's have some fun today. Let's learn a lot, and we're going to get started. So my name is Mark Banfield, founder of Band Faith Systems. Um, we actually work with training development. We work with management development. We work with inventory control. So if you need something, give me a call. Give us a call, and we'll be able to help you improve. Joining me today is my friend from Michigan. He looks like he's out under the um, autumn leaves. We got Mark Schoenberry. Mark, tell us about yourself. Hey, Mark. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm smiling because I, I didn't realize you still had so much energy in you. Yeah, well, I, sometimes I keep it constrained, but got to go, got to go, got to go. So we're going to we're talking about uh, newsletters and communicating with customers today, right? All right. Anything you want to say about you? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, I, I think the reason Mark asked me to be here is I've been successful in the uh, uh, sales, mostly car business, for the past uh, 33 years. And um, and I gauge my success because I'm still doing it. <laughs> Very nice. All right, and, uh, I'm glad oh, to be here. here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Didn't That's wanna... all right. That's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm waiting for my chance to interrupt you. Okay, nice. Joining us will be Alex Thayer. Alex, give us a, a dance and or something about yourself. Yeah, hello. I'm uh, Alex Thayer with uh, Michigan Dealer Service. I'm looking forward to being here talking about uh, communicating with customers, best ways to do that and how to do it. So looking forward to it. All right. Finally, from the deep, hot south in Florida, we have that our is friend Ron Catronio. Good afternoon, everybody. Ron Catronio, The Professional Edge. We're a South Florida-based training consultancy, and we help you gain an advantage over other people with your sales skills and your abilities. Nice, nice. All right. So, Alex, you know, we technology is always fun, so um, we've lost Alex's camera and mic. Alex will be back and join us, I'm sure, as soon as he gets that worked out. But we're going to move on. So, Last week, we talked about communicating in general, the, the do's and don'ts of how you communicate face-to-face, -face, how you communicate talking, how you use the phone to communicate, and how important it is to keep um, the emotion and the interaction and, and, and the, the body language even over the phone. So we're going to move today into the electronic realm, and today we're going to talk about email, first of all, and then we're going to talk about newsletters. So let's start off by talking about email. What do you need to do to properly use email to communicate with prospects and or customers? Mark, I'll go to you first. So when you say properly use, Mark, what are you, what are you referencing? I mean, there's you're talking about the format of the email. Are you talking about uh, prospecting or the first time you're communicating with with someone? Or, or is this, a, is this a, an established client who's on your client list who you've sold products to? I'm going to say yes. I want you to answer all of those. So, okay. yeah. So, all right. So you bring up a valid point. If you, we've got a customer or a prospect, someone that's not a customer yet, what do you need to be leery of, careful of, and how do you start communicating with that person over email? Well, I would say across the board, no matter what, whether it's a prospect or it's an established client, you need to be short and concise with your email. Straight to the point. Don't put a lot of fluff in the email. Don't have a whole pair, you know, uh, three or four paragraphs of, of um, well, for lack of a better term, BS, right? Just put in there, this is what I'm communicating with you about. This is what I'm reaching out about. And here's what it is. And say what you're going to say. Okay, Ron, you gave me thumb ups on that. Anything you want to add? No, I agree. I agree. I, I think we have to be succinct, get to the point, Make make your point quickly and move on. People don't want a lot of mumble jumble. They're not going to read two paragraphs. They're going to read yeah, two. Have sentences. a purpose. State your purpose. Okay, exactly. so 
going off of that, Alex, what would you, a lot of people, I'm just going to throw this out there. Is the key part of an email then to be successful, the subject line? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's the key, but it's certainly important. So yeah. what are some of the dangers of subject line usage and development? Um, they can get your email caught in junk mail so the customer won't even see it. So talk about that, Alex. Explain what goes on that would cause me to write an email that would get it dumped in a person's spam box or trash. Um, you know, I, if you're using multiple colors um, to highlight certain text, a bunch of exclamation marks, um, probably uh, emojis, um, there's uh, just different stuff like that uh, makes the filter see it as a, uh, a junk mail. Okay. And they will route it that way. Okay. So is it a good idea, I'll just throw this out to the group, is it a good idea to use um, one of these CRM systems? So CRM systems are great. They allow you to manage your customer base, right? Customer relation manager is what it is. It's software. Back in the day, Mark, Alex, Ron, we had these things called Rolodexes, right? We had little cards, and we'd flip it, and we'd pull out a card. Now the CRM takes the place of that. Should we use those CRMs to do one of the things they can do, which is a mass email? So I write an email, and it puts everyone's name, and then the same email goes out to everyone. So I blast an email to everyone. Is that a good idea? Well, you can do a blind, you can do what's called blind copy email. I wouldn't send you know, the same email to 200 people, and then they all know the 200 you sent it to. So always okay. blind copy that. Again, short, succinct to the point, you know, and just communicate. Offer some incentive or some reason for them to want to reach back out to you. Okay. So are there restrictions on what you can and can't do with email when you're contacting a customer? Yes. Sure. What are they? Mark, what are they? The, re the restrictions? I couldn't quite hear it. The restrictions no, the, on sending the, an email? What are the restrictions? Can I just contact anyone by an email and try to sell them something? Well, sure. So you you can send an email <laughs> if you have their email address. But I would I would say this. Let me let me back up just for a second. You asked about using the CRM as a tool to do mass email. All right. If you're gonna do that, because I'm not saying it's wrong. But if you're going to do that, most of your CRMs are going to have built right in there. It's going to give you the op the option to give the customer the option to opt out of future emails, which you, is a requirement. That's a requirement. Use that. Use that tool. Right. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on the regulations or or anything like that. But I'm telling you, use that tool because it probably you're saying it is it is part of a, a regulation, Alex. Yeah. Um. Above and beyond, even if it wasn't part of a regulation, give the customer that option, and that way you're not ticking people off because you've got them in this email and sending them all this. Uh, yeah, we, we, we didn't. I don't think we talked about it last week when we covered texting. We talked about texting last week. There are regulations about texting people, right? Yes, and there is. The, the ability to say, stop this. If you have, I mean, stepping back as well, if you have a CRM that allows you to send out emails individually to customers on a scheduled basis, as well as mass emails for marketing purposes, you need to use your CRM in every way possible to communicate with your customer effectively because that you're paying for that, that the functionality. And officially, I've always used a CRM on a computer. I never had a Rolodex, so I don't know. <laughs> I started there. Did you ever have a card? Did you ever have one of those books full of business cards? Yeah. Uh, I have had that, yeah. The, the, the okay. Franklin Planner. I had a Franklin Planner. Right, there. okay. All right. Yeah, Rolodex. I'm, I'm showing – Mark and I are showing our age here. We're in you know, <laughs> um, you know. So, yeah, fun times, fun times. So, all right, so we've got this email. We're writing it out to prospects. How should we use email to manage the relationship with a customer? And I'm calling a customer someone that is either in the negotiation stage or has fully purchased. 
So how do we use email to manage that relationship? Um, well, those are two distinct processes for follow-up. Somebody who's getting ready to buy and somebody that's already bought. Um, so you're going to communicate with those people two different ways, really. And so, Ron or anyone, what are the two different ways? How? What's the difference between the two conversations? The conversation. I think, um, well, somebody who's just bought the car who has purchased is – Part of your follow-up is seeing how that product is doing for them. Are there any issues that you can resolve? Is it great? Um, that kind of thing. Whereas if somebody's just getting ready to buy, you're trying to see what their last few hot buttons are for them to help them through that decision. Okay, Ron, you started to say something? Well, yeah, you want to sculpt the email. Uh, if you're reaching out after the sale, post-sale, you know, it's checking in. How's the car performing? Who, what have your friends said? Has anybody expressed interest in looking at the same car? I'll give them the same great deal I gave you. you know, so you're being courteous and professional. If you're working with them to try to capture them, to bring them into the store, it's asking those pertinent questions. You know, what do you want? What do you like? What do you have that you don't want? You know, just sculpt the car designed to meet their and exceed their needs. Okay. All right, so um, are there any other no-nos when it comes to email? Don't be long-winded. Don't be long-winded. Okay, anything else? Don't use any sarcasm or foul language. It, it, the problem with email is what's missing from an email that you get in a normal conversation? Body language and voice inflection. Yeah, body language and inflection. All you're getting are the words, and so it's easy. What about... Uh, People that aren't good typists, uh, and I know folks like this, and I'm sure you do too. What about writing, sending an email in all caps? Well, facts yeah, are all right now. <laughs> Normal grammatical uh, structure as you would if you're writing a letter. So let, let's be more specific about this. Many of the um, dealer operating systems require that they have the caps lock on all the time. Right. I mean, a lot of them have changed over now and it's not that way, but there are still many dealers out there that are on the systems that require the caps locks to be on all the time. So if you have that system and you're used to having your caps lock on, turn it off before you start sending an email. What, what, if you get an email in all caps, what's the impression? That you're being yelled at. Yeah, yeah it's just that. like texting uh, in all caps. You're just shouting at somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and you don't want that. You don't want that. Mark, could you do that again? I didn't quite get that. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm channeling my dad there. Sorry about that. Thank you, Miz, this uh, morning, Mark. I had two cups of coffee this morning. Uh, so, yeah, so that's the problem. So, yeah, but, hey, good times, good times. All right, so let's move on to now looking, uh, talking somewhat about newsletters. So... I'm going to go to Alex first because Alex actually does this, I know. So, Alex, when I say a newsletter, what am I talking about? Um, you're talking about a billboard that you send to your customer on a regular basis through email, um, through the mail, whatever whatever medium you get your newsletter out. It's uh, an engaging storytelling medium that uh, – can get into your customer, get in front of your customers on a regular basis. How it should it be all business? What time, Ron? It yeah. shouldn't be all business. Yeah. Okay. So, how long should a good e uh, newsletter be? Should it be a one page? Should it be 16 pages? How long should this thing be? Two to four pages. Okay. Two to four pages. Alex, That's Mark, you guys heard of that? You know, it depends on. Oh, go ahead, Mark. Uh, go ahead. I, I, I would, I would say one to two pages, just because you don't want to overload the customer. You don't want to. Uh, you want to continue. If you're going to send out a newsletter, you should do it on a consistent basis, whether that's monthly, quarterly, whatever the case may be. It should be consistent. And going back, just like we were talking about an email, it should be concise, and you should provide some kind of value to the customer. Okay, so fairly short, not long-winded, 
not all business, showing some of your personal. So what are the type of things you do you put in an email then specifically? What would be some good things to do? Well, I'll tell you something I used to do years ago, and I had a very strong response to it. I'm very big on motivational quotes. So I used to make up a postcard every month, and on one side was a motivational quote. On the other side mm -hmm. was, you know, who am I sending it to and who's it coming from? And I would send that out to all of my existing customers. There were occasion when I was too busy and didn't get a chance to send it. I actually got phone calls from people saying, where's my quote? Okay. So, so it really had profound back in the day, you were using the U.S. Postal Service to, yes. to accomplish that? So there was a cost incurred. You, you sure. had to print the cards. You had well, to mail them, send it out. Today, if I wanted to, and, and so I know in the past I've received emails um, in the or newsletters in the mail. Right. Um, then we moved to, I would get, again, guys, listening folks, I may use terminology you don't know. I would get an email over my fax machine. Right? <laughs> so my fax machine, a fax machine is a thing that looks like a printer that talks to a telephone. Right. So the fax machine would spit out these newsletters, typically one pages. Um, sometimes uh, there was one I can think of in particular. There was nothing but trivia and jokes with advertisements. Okay, um, and the per and the people sending that were actually selling the making their money by selling the ad space and then doing what was known as a fax blast or sending it out to a huge number of fax machines. In today's world. So let's forget about the past. How do you do it today? If I want to digitize my newsletter, and first of all, should I digitize it or should I keep it paper? Uh, do both. Uh, if you have the ability, do both. Uh, I believe you're going to get more uh, more response today from digitized. Okay. So... All right, so if I'm going to digitize it, how do you send it? Or how do you get this newsletter out there? And I think I know one answer because we've been talking about it, but how do we get it out there? Just through email. Okay. I would I would suggest uh, some kind of blog post as well or a website that's live all the time. Um, but I, I like the email option, but then having also having it out there uh, on the web. Okay. Would you put it on places like Facebook and LinkedIn? I would. I would probably share, uh, maybe create a group or a page for your customers, that, that depending on the platform, and share it there as well. So, if you're going yeah, to email it, Ron. send it as a PDF. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why? It's easier for them to open it up. They don't got to mess with just click and it opens. They okay. can't, they, they're not going to interact with it, but fast and easy. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming this newsletter has different articles and pictures and, and things like that, right? So when I go to Facebook, for example, I'll use Facebook right now, and we do a Facebook group or I put it on my Facebook page, do I put a PDF of this document? Or do I put the different pieces out there separately? How would you do it? Them together. Yeah, you know, you can do you can do whichever uh, fits for your site or where you're posting it at and your customers. I think both ways can be uh, effective with it. Really, okay. it just kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish with it. Yeah, I would say it would depend on the platform. Okay. So, um, so tell me. If I were building a newsletter today, tell me what I need to do. And you can all talk and get in, but guide me to building a newsletter. Um, for me, I think you need uh, two or three industry articles or information or instruction or something that's related to uh, an industry, specific industry. And then a couple of uh, sections or articles on uh, a hobby or something that you're interested in and passionate about, something that'll help you connect with 
um, your customers or clients on a different level aside from business. Um, and, you know, have those things in mind and prepare to send it on a regular basis with updated uh, information on consistent types of articles. All right. Ron, or Mark, you were, or I'm sorry, Ron, I think you were starting to say something. No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Mark, you want to add anything to that? No, no. I was just, uh, I just found a newsletter from 1992 that I sent out. Uh, to <laughs> Do you want to share that? Can you share uh, it? Is gonna, it on your phone or is it on your computer? I'm going to send it to you. It's on my phone if you want it. Just a snapshot. There's three pages. I'll okay. send it to you. If you want to share it, you can. Yeah, if I get it here, I'll, I'll, I'll look for it. So, all right, so do I want to make this all like a newspaper predominantly with a lot of words? Well, I'm saying no. So what do I do, Ron? Again, you I'm want, You don't want to get very wordy. You know, if you're going to put something in there, you know, maybe you want to put a recipe. Maybe you want to put a promotion for something uh, service-related in your dealership. Keep it again. You got to keep it short, direct, and to the point. Someone sent me a newsletter. I I get a newsletter occasionally from JM Lexus down here. Okay. And when I get it, they promote a special sale, real quick. They promote a service special, and I got to tell you, I was there uh, the end of last week to get my oil changed, and I ended up getting the you know the synthetic oil, and they did something else because I received. This little notation. Okay. Um, all right. So hold on here. I'm pulling up. I'm, well, there it is. All right. So here is, can you all see this screenshot that I'm looking at? Yes. All right. So nice. there's, there's Mark's, you know, I was talking about his newsletter. Here's the front page of his newsletter. I picked the that front Mark's page of your brother. Up. Because I, I love the mark up in the corner here. That mustache makes him just the man. Um, he's a good-looking guy. Yeah. So he's got his his um, information here. Please remember, I also sell used cars. Um, when you look, can you see the second page now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. There's the second page. He talks about a mountain trek with the Jeep CJ, a recipe for lemon pear pie. I might try that actually. That sounds pretty good. Um, I know it's October, but close enough to September. And then at the end, we have I the comedy it. corner. Nice. And a puzzle. I love it. That's great, Mark. That is great. That's why you were so successful. You were innovative and you provided distinct leadership. So, yeah, so that's good. That's a good example. So, I guess my point is, and in, in, People today, you've all said keep it short. I don't want to say people have short attention spans, but people have short attention spans. I'm going to Thank say, you. right? It's all about everything from TV to movies to what we watch, the, the shots. TikTok is so successful because it's short repeating videos, very short videos in rapid succession. And we've gotten ourselves trained to, to watch it. So... When you tie that with the fact that years ago, where there used to be this newspaper, a newspaper was a piece of paper with a bunch of news and stuff in it. Um, I, I think they do exist somewhat. Uh, but there was one called the USA Today, the nation's newspaper. And they actually did a study, and that study showed that the most prominent, the most common thing that people looked at the most and the USA Today was on every section. They had four sections of this newspaper. Down in the bottom corner was an infographic about that section. That was the most common talked about and looked at item in the whole newspaper. So my question is, going back to this newsletter, do I want to use words or do I want to use pictures? Pictures. All right. So how do you yeah. take words and make a picture? We think in pictures, Mark. We don't think in words. Okay. If I, if I say the word to you, red, what do you envision? Uh, the movie. Oh, sure, sure. Retired, the retired but dangerous or whatever. <laughs> you don't see R, E, and D. No. People think. See my shirt. 
They right. think in color. They think in pictures. Right. right. Um, pictogram. Is it easy, I will ask, to take those words and turn them into infographics and pictures? It's a challenge. Mark's okay. probably good at it. So, um, yeah. So what do you? So what do you think? Um, so you blend a combination of this stuff, right? Mark, you look like you're getting ready to say something. I was just going to say I, I I agree with what you're saying 110 percent because when I used to read USA Today, I would look at that infographic on every section. And that would determine if I even opened it to look at the, the <laughs> articles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Every time. Yeah, it takes effort to, to do a newsletter, to do one of these things, right? To, to, to you know, and, and, and we're making it digital, so it's easier to put in the digital world and to print it. Um, but it takes effort. We have to come up with the ideas. We have to come up with how, the, you know, the layout's the first thing, what it's going to look like, consistency. So the last question I'm going to ask about newsletters, um, as we're getting out, running out of time here, how often should I be sending my newsletter? So I'll I'll pipe in on that right now. So whatever time frame, however consistent, whether it's monthly, quarterly, annually, biannually, weekly, whatever it is, you need to determine that up front and stick with it. Yes, sir. This, yes, sir. This is the long game. This is not the short game. This is a newsletter is about building your business, building your brand, and servicing your customers. So whatever time frame you determine, as a matter of fact, if you're just starting out to doing a newsletter, I would suggest you do it quarterly because it's not as, as huge a commitment as doing it monthly. Because if you're doing it monthly, if you send out that newsletter today, you better be working on the next one for next month this afternoon. Right. You're right, Mark. You're right. He's right. So if I'm going to make this digital, because, again, this is the way people operate today, do we need to include video? Yeah. Can help, yeah, absolutely. Now that doesn't work when you print it, right? Then you got static stuff. But if it's digital, whether it's in an email, can you make an a, a, an email attachment that's a newsletter that includes video links? Yes, or, yeah, absolutely. Video open up again. You have to know how to do that, though, right? You have to to learn, teach yourself what's going on, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, sorry. Um, Go ahead. The, um, it's it's a little bit of research will uh, show you a lot of information on how to how to get uh, videos embedded into your um, uh, email, your digital email or uh, newsletter, I guess, um, and get pictures in there and um, make sure it's engaging. That's the biggest thing and is having your newsletter engaging for the people that are receiving it. Yeah, and that's a good point, Ron. Is uh, Making sure it's uh, uh, I, um, um, specific that you can read it on mobile devices. Yeah, the, the number one way people are accessing the computer, uh, accessing the internet, and getting their feeds and everything today is on their mobile device. That's where they're watching videos. That's where they're 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 watching the news. They're they're doing all kinds of. It's on their mobile device. So if you don't have it formatted for that, you're going to lose them. If the yeah. words are, are normal computer printout size, they're going to be too small on that mobile device. So you've got to make sure that you do that. Hey, Ron, I love the look on your face when your wife walked into your view. You just lit <laughs> up. You had this smile that was just so genuine and right from the heart. It's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? A lot of people do these things and it's all polished and you know what? We're just a bunch of guys sitting at home doing stuff, right? Our wives are around. We've got kids. We saw Alex's uh, daughter on, online before we started. Uh, that, that's what this is about, right? Now, I got to tell you, yes. my wife's a special lady and 
when she comes in the room, it does get a little brighter. <laughs> All, right. I All right. So that's it. So again, I'm going to give you all a, a soapbox moment. Talk about email, talk about newsletters, or talk about whatever you want, whatever's on your mind as we wrap up here. So I'm going to start and go to, again, we started with Mark in the introductions. We'll let Mark have his soapbox moment first. I'm just going to say that uh, whatever, if you're starting a new newsletter, whatever the case may be, determine your time frame, determine your format, and be consistent. Do it over and over and over again. Be short, sweet, and consistent, and follow through. It will pay dividends for the rest of your career. That's it. I look forward to hearing from you next week. And just to let you all know again, here is Mark earlier in his career. <laughs> I had a lot more hair back then. I had to go back to that. That's great. He's Mark's younger brother. All right. So now we're going to go to Ron. Ron, you get your soapbox moment. Hey, everybody. I love standing on a soapbox. But it's uh, what we're talking about is innovation, leadership, and doing things the average salesperson don't do. If you can separate yourself just by a nose against the competition, you're going to win more races. You're going to sell more vehicles. Do it. Don't be lazy. All right, Ron. Great, great stuff. So now we're going to go to Alex. Alex, you're on. All right. Yeah, emails and newsletters, are there. they are great ways to help start uh, or continue building your brand. Um, newsletters, just consistency um, and engagement with your customer. Um, and, you know, like Ron said, it's innovation, trying something different um, and having fun with it, uh, especially on a newsletter um, that makes all the difference in the world is uh, if you're enjoying what you're putting out there and the content that's in it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to wrap up here. So in, in my soapbox moment, you know, newsletters are about building brand. Um, they do are, are take time. They do take effort. But you can share information. You can show who you are, what you do in a great way. And there's so many different methods and mediums that you can use to get it out there. So non-topic soapbox, I've been reading a book by uh, a gentleman by the name of Jeffrey Gittimer, who is um, a sales expert. I, I, I really like what he does. He wrote a book called The Little Red Book of Selling. But I'm reading one of his current books called Get Shit Done. Sorry if I offend anyone. but um, And there's two quotes towards the back of it. So there's a, a gentleman by the name of Orson Suet Marden who wrote a book called He Can Who Thinks He Can. And the quote that Jeffrey uses from him is, just be yourself in sales. Just be yourself. Um, and then he goes on to add this quote. In order to be the best for others, you must be the best for yourself. So just be yourself, but be the best you that you can be. Better yourself. Learn. Figure out. Learn how to do a newsletter. Learn how to use email. Learn. Always be learning. Always improve yourself so you can be the best self that you can be. And that's how I'm going to wrap up today. So we'll go back to the group. So everyone, thank you for watching. We are here every Thursday at noon. Join us. We do have comments. Um, Ron put a comment out there saying, hey, if you contact him, the first question he gets, he has got a sales DVD, two, two DVD set on sales that he'll be happy to share. Um, but you got to send him a question. You got to get, get it out there. So that's our session today. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for attending. We'll do this next week. Next week, we're going to talk about communi communicating through more different mediums. So we're on this four-part series of communicating. This was part two. Next week is part three. Join us. Catch up. Thank you for attending, and have a great week. Adios. And I'll dance, on, I'll dance as we finish out here. Give it a little dance. Mark, Alex, are you guys going to dance for us? Dance. <laughs> Do a little no? Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Have a great week.